Genshin Impact. Where else can you play as a beautiful lightning mage and a pyromaniac archer at the same time, while fighting dragons in the sky and exploring dungeons full of puzzles on the ground in what is arguably one of the most visually striking games on the market? It's in this game that I would meet my arch nemesis. No, not him. No, not that. Yes, that. This chest would toy with me and my sanity. This chest, so close and yet so far, I can see it, but I couldn't touch it. It looks like I can jump to it, but I can't. This is the story of how I became enemies with a treasure chest in Genshin Impact and my journey to defeat it. But first, Genshin Impact. What actually is it? I knew of it, I'd heard the name, but I didn't know anything about it. This video is very much my first impressions of the game, so I just wanted to approach Genshin Impact with an open mind and find out what makes it so popular. Lucky for me, Genshin Impact reached out and offered to sponsor the video if I would give it a try and share my thoughts with you guys. So let's talk about what I learned, what my first impressions were, and what new stuff is being added to the game. So if it looks fun to you, be sure to use the link in the description below to start playing it for free right now. Now for my personal experience with the game, the first thing that happens is the game opens with a cutscene that lets you choose your first character. One of these two twins. According to the lore, both are about 500 years old so clearly they've got fantastic skincare routines going on. Apparently we were traveling through space when some god interrupted our journey at this here planet. I hate when that happens. Ultimately, this stranded us here. To make matters worse, whichever twin we don't choose gets disappeared by the big bad god and sent to some unknown fate. Finding our twin appears to be the driving force for the early story. Next, I find myself on a beautiful beach. I meet my sidekick Paimon. Paimon is a likable little angel on my shoulder who watches out for me and teaches me the robes. Her voice is about an octave too high, so I kind of want to feed her to the first enemy I find, but at the same time, she's really nice and helpful, so we'll let her stick around for now. From the very first camera shot, you see how beautiful the game is going to be. Massive cliffs, vibrant greens, and a cascading waterfall all invite you to explore this new unknown place that we found ourselves at before unlocking my first waypoint. These are going to be a big part of exploring, as you can open up your map and see where they are, so one early goal is to make your way to all of them so that you can fast travel around the continent easily. Easier. Paimon also teaches me how to climb walls and swim through water. Surprisingly, my first death would be at the hands of a duck. Yeah, I know. Don't say it. I've got no excuse. I saw it. I wanted to touch it. I'm not even sure what drove me to do this, but I learned a valuable lesson. Your stamina drains fast while swimming, and once it's gone, you're dead. So the traveler has a great skincare routine, but not great stamina. I guess no one can have it all. Believe it or not, this duck would not be the most difficult enemy I face, but we'll get to that. Then I discovered a dragon with a temper, and the next thing I know, the dragon eats Paimon, ripping her apart limb from limb. It was horrifying. It was, I'm just kidding. The dragon flew off, and he did eat Paimon, and for that reason, I've decided that the dragon does need to die the next time I see him. This injustice, this malice, simply can't stand. Then I met Amber, an archer that shoots fire arrows, my first new party edition. Then I found it. No, not it. No, not that. Yes, that. The chest, the first real boss I would face off against. While every challenge up to this point would be effortlessly vanquished, this chest would become my nemesis. The cell to my Goku, the scar to my Simba, the lack of water to every plant I've tried to grow in my house. This chest would be conquered, or would it? I tried running, I tried climbing, I tried jumping, I even tried evading and it just stood there with that smug look on its face, ridiculing me. So I told it some jokes. Why won't shrimp share their treasure? Because they are shellfish. <laughs> and nothing, it didn't flinch, not a single smile, not a giggle, nothing. So I resigned, promising to return another day, stronger, faster, wiser. So I resumed my journey. I would explore everywhere. I would unlock all the shrines to remove the fog of war from the map. I would go into dungeons and kill the enemies inside. I would solve puzzles. I would hit the like button on this YouTube video. I would even kill the dragon that had refused to eat Paimon. I would spend way too long trying to climb the highest tower in town. I would fail over and over, but I wouldn't give up until I succeeded. After all, if I couldn't defeat this tower, how would I get to that chest? 
Finally, I made it to the top. It was a victory, but it was a hollow victory, knowing that that chest was still out there, waiting for me to open it, laughing at me. I couldn't help but wonder, had it all been for nothing? Had I killed the dragon for nothing? Had I climbed this tower for nothing? Had I discovered every waypoint and killed every enemy I ran across for nothing? No, it can't be. There has to be a way. And then it hit me. It wasn't for nothing. I cleared those dungeons. I got more powerful and I defeated a dragon. I gained 15 levels. Wait, I did defeat a dragon, a flying dragon. If I could fly to a dragon, surely I could fly to this chest with my newly unlocked gliding capabilities. So I ran to the chest with a plan. I would fly or more accurately glide. After one final standoff, I worked up the courage to try. The chest looking at me and me looking at the chest. I ran for the chest and with every ounce of power I had, I jumped and took flight. I opened my glider with marksman-like precision. I had been training my whole life for this moment and then I wasn't high enough. The trajectory was all wrong. I was going to fall short. Panicking, my life flashed before my eyes. Was it all for nothing? If I couldn't open this chest, how would I ever save my twin brother? This can't be how it ends. This can't be it. Then I noticed it. I can reach the chest. I'm not standing next to it, but I can reach it. I smash the chest open while floating in midair, and the loot flies out, gloriously raining upon the ground. I pick it up and dispatch the ferocious level one flame drop that tries to stop me from collecting my hard-earned treasure. Victory was sweet. I went back to my perch and pondered. I wasn't sure what to do next. Was I the dog that finally caught the car? I didn't have a plan for what I was going to do now. There was never an after. This was it. This was my reason for being. I had caught it. Had I done it? Had I beaten Genshin Impact? I felt a brief moment of sadness. I wasn't ready for it to be over yet, so I opened my map again. For the first time in a long while, I started scanning it. There were waypoints everywhere for miles and miles. As far as I could see, there were entire regions I hadn't touched. In fact, I had only just scratched the surface of the game. Sure, I had now conquered the most important boss in the game, but I had so much more to look forward to, and this excited me. I had more of the story to look forward to, as well as more of the amazing musical scores to enjoy as I explored the vibrant and beautiful world. I had more weapons to find and upgrade. I had more heroes to unlock and add to my party. There was still so much to do, and I was happy to realize that because I was having a good time. I wasn't ready for it to be over yet. How long can one player enjoy Genshin Impact? It's hard to say, but the game is absolutely massive and it's always adding new content. In fact, that's one thing that they have been doing an amazing job at, is adding fantastic new content for players to enjoy. Genshin Impact released in September of 2020, and it's been adding massive amounts of content ever since. The most recent of which is Fontaine, which features a massive new map that includes multiple layers such as a main city above the ground, hidden passages below ground, and an underwater map, all of which are filled with secrets and treasures waiting to be found. And these areas are stunning. Just look at these aqueduct-like structures with boats in them. I often say my favorite favorite biomes in video games are the biomes I'd want to hang out in, in real life. This is why swamps are always my least favorite zones and vibrant zones are always my most favorite. And let me tell you, if any place on earth looked half as gorgeous as Fontaine, I'd head there in a heartbeat. Beyond that, a lot of interesting characters are added to the story with Fontaine, and those same characters will eventually be playable in the future, making them interesting to keep an eye on. Fontaine is a new region ruled by the Hydro Archon Focalars. Fontaine is a nation rich in culture and spectacle with a strong focus on the power of justice. The Fontaine map looks huge and it includes multiple layers such as a main city, underground passages, and an underwater map. All of these places are filled with treasure and secrets worth exploring. While the Fontaine cityscapes are sure to catch your eye, perhaps the most exciting addition with Fontaine is the ability to swim in water and underwater without using your stamina bar. For the first time, players will be able to explore underwater. Players won't face stamina issues swimming underwater, but will consume aquatic stamina while sprinting, which can be restored by collecting recovery orbs underwater. You can also swim through turbulent bubbles to speed up your movement. This means that you can dive into the water and explore the underwater canyons, caves, and tunnels in search of chests, collectibles, and more. While exploring these underground cave systems, you might even find yourself emerging from the water face to face with a big boss. After 4.0 comes online, the teleport waypoint will automatically be unlocked at the realm of Farakert in Sumero, which is just beside Fontaine. Travelers will be able to use this to quickly arrive at Fontaine, making it easy for new players and veterans to get to the region. Fontaine also has new characters 
characters like Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet. Linny is a skilled and eloquent magician. After the parents' death and having been saved from an abusive noble by their father, Linny has also undertaken missions for the House of Hearth and has said he will eventually become his father's successor. Lynette is Linny's sister and is more quiet and reserved. She serves as her brother's assistant as well as being the eyes and ears for a House of Hearth. Fremenet is a trusted diver of Fontaine and brother of famous magicians Linny and Lynette. He's a quiet teenager who is skilled in diving and hides an unembellished innocence beneath his icy exterior. Fontaine also features a new event, the Mega Mecha Melee event. In the court of Fontaine, Les Cott's Clockwork Workshop is preparing for major commission, but the staff seem to have encountered difficulties. Help these talented craftspeople complete their masterpiece. It includes three mini games: Dance Dance Resolution, Parental Turbulent Charge, and Efficacy Testing Simulation Arena. There are also Relic Records, creations of the Hydra Nation where you collect materials and specialties to get rewards. Then there is Studies in Light and Shadow, a Fontaine enchantment, which is a photography event to see the sides of Fontaine. You also have Verdict of Blades, a fighting event, and finally, Leyline Overflow a recurring event. So what is Genshin Impact? Well, it's a bit unique. It's an open world multiplayer RPG where you explore the world, unlock waypoints for fast travel, hunt for chests which reward you with experience and items, and solve puzzles inside of labyrinths, all while battling it out with the various enemies scattered throughout. There are collectibles, treasures, and all kinds of rewards tucked into every bit of open world, which really serves to keep you going from one place to the next without hesitating, as you're always finding something new to solve, conquer, and be rewarded for. The game's multiplayer if you want it to be, but you can can do everything solo if you'd rather, which is how I spent my time playing. I mean, I could totally play with friends if I wanted to, because I definitely have friends to play with, but I just choose not to because I wanted to play alone. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Anyways, I have Lisa now. Hi, Lisa. Genshin Impact is available on PC, Android, iOS, and PlayStation 4 and 5, and is completely free to play. I played the game without spending a dime. Of course, being a free-to-play player will sometimes demand a little patience and self-control, as some of the game's monetization is centered around cosmetics and the opportunity to expedite your progress in one way or another. The great news is, all of this monetization is 100% optional, and you can choose to play the game without spending a dime, making this a fantastic option for someone looking for something to play who isn't looking to drop $70 on a new AAA title. We've seen how those purchases can go. Genshin Impact takes place on the continent of Tevat, where seven kinds of elemental powers surge, and essentially each hero you find will fall into one of those elemental categories, like ice, fire, water, lightning, earth, and so on. You'll be able to climb, swim, and glide your way across this beautiful world with jaw-dropping landscapes, intriguing challenges, and diverse cultures. Or if you'd rather, you can either fish or farm. So whether you want exploration, combat, or relaxing life skilling, Genshin has you covered. So what are my final thoughts on Genshin Impact so far? If you're looking for a completely free-to-play RPG set in a beautiful universe with open-world exploration, puzzle solving, great combat, all topped off with some amazing music, I think you'll really enjoy Genshin Impact. With a bit of patience, you can play this game for completely free, which is impressive given the incredible quality with which it was made. If you're a fan of gacha games and you haven't tried Genshin Impact, I'd say it's an easy choice. Try it, it's free, you literally have nothing to lose. If you've taken a break from Genshin, now is the perfect time to go back because of the addition of Fontaine. You'll have a new new map, new underwater content, and new heroes to try. For me, the story was solid, the voice acting was great, although maybe at times a little bit high pitched. It was a bit like being able to play the main character in a good anime. But my favorite part of this game actually had nothing to do with any of that. My favorite part of the game was the exploration, climbing every hill, every mountain, every structure just to find out what they had hidden on top. And this game does a better job than almost any other game I've played at rewarding your curiosity. If you take the time to climb your way somewhere, there is a good chance there's something up there waiting to reward you, whether it's a chest or a collectible of some sort. What do you think of Genshin Impact? Have you played it before? Let me know down in the comments below. Genshin Impact is even going to have a real-life exhibition called Endless Adventure in Tavat, Fontaine Edition in New York, between 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. August 19th to August 27th. This exhibition will show you concept art depicting Fontaine's landscapes, architectures, creatures, weapons, and monsters. There will also be Genshin Impact-themed artwork from artists and Genshin Impact creators all over the world, as well as exhibition-themed merchandise featuring the new characters and brand new event rewards. If you're interested in all of that, but you hate leaving your house as much as I do, you'll be able to 
check all of this out online starting August 28th. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed this first impressions video of Genshin Impact, please be sure to like and subscribe for more great content. Which part of Genshin Impact appeals to you the most? Is it the dungeons, the puzzles, the open world exploration, collecting heroes? Let me know. I'd love for you to tell me. Massive thank you to my channel members. Thanks for supporting the channel in the big way that you do. If you want to become a channel member to have your name appear at the end of these videos, as well as gain access to behind the scenes videos, private discord channels, and more, click the join button down below. If you ever want to, you can catch me live on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash lucky ghost, or you'll be able to keep tabs on what I'm covering next on Twitter at twitter.com slash lucky coast TV. Both of those links are down in the description below. If you'd rather click than remember them. Thanks for watching. And if you're not sure what to do next, consider watching one of these videos popping up on screen right now and good luck getting your chest.